30 minutes. If you have been praying for an hour before, this month I am moving to two hours. If you can't pass from nine o'clock before to two hours, this month, oh God, I'm able to fast in the name of Jesus. I want you to decree with your own mouth this morning that from glory to glory, the Lord is taking you. From grace to grace, the Lord is taking us. And we will come back next month to give us testimony to the name of the Lord and Lord because he will not share his glory with anybody. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we believe it, that from glory to glory, you are taking us in this church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
relate to my testimony. Um, this month it will clock a year that I and my son came into this country. And I want to give glory to the Almighty God because when we came, uh, I couldn't get job on time. So I have it in mind that before it clocks more year, I have a project in my mind that I want to lay my hands on. But it seems when I didn't get any job, it seems the project won't work. So uh, about last year, an offer came towards the project. But the person that wanted to um, give us the project said it won't work because of the negotiation of the price. So I've already lost my own that maybe it won't work before the year runs out, or even this year. But I want to give God the glory. I want to give God the Almighty because last two weeks, the person called again that in the she was set. And I want to thank God because the project that I've been, I've been, look, I've been looking to have to start, God made me to start this month, example that I, it's, it's lucky here that I came into this country with my son. Amen. I pray that the Lord will make it to end with joy, with, with gladness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I need me to sing just the chorus. <laughs> How oh, great is our God? shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I fast forward to the said he will give his angels charge over me and to keep us in all our ways. And verse 6 says that with long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. And I'm giving this testimony to the glory of God on behalf of myself and my husband. This month the Lord is adding another year to us. And I just want to be to glory to him. I look at my life and it's it's synonymous to you know that Yoruba word that says Ukutata Kopti Amole Kosile. The the stone that stone that you ignored became the cornerstone. I remember when I couldn't even speak. Well, and my siblings, you know, when they are going to play, they will, they won't want me to go with them. They will just say, you know, as kids, because then I speak my native dialect, Ijebu. So they said I disgrace them. And now I look at me, and I see how they call on me. And I see how the Lord, you know, has blessed me and blessed them. You know, it's not as if they did it on purpose. We were all still young, less than three, four, five years old then. But I look at it and I'm like, it is only God. I give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to thank God for adding another year to my life this month. Praise the Lord. Praise mighty Jesus. We are saying faithful are you Hallelujah, give it to Jesus. For those testimonies, give it to Jesus. 
As a matter of fact, if you want more, give it up for Jesus. If you want those testimonies, if you want to testify to the goodness of God, next month, give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. May you have your seats. Amen. You are welcome to God's presence this morning. The Lord is worthy to be praised. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter, 10, chapter, chapter 5, verse 13, it says that the trumpeters and singers perform together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments. They raise their voices and praise the Lord with these words, is good, is faithfulness, what endureth forever and ever. Hallelujah. His faithfulness endureth forever and ever. Today is Thanksgiving service. We have come with the heart of Thanksgiving. I pray that our Thanksgiving shall be accepted by him in the name of Jesus Christ. Is anybody worshiping with us for the very first time this morning? Hallelujah. Anyone worshiping with us this morning? Amen. That means we need to uh, we need to get to work. We need to get to work. Let's evangelize more. I uh, pray that the Lord will give us the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise to our feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Let's raise our offerings to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, King of Glory, this morning for giving us another opportunity to give unto you. Lord, as we have come to give this unto you, we pray that you accept it, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we pray that you sanctify it, O oh Lord, for your use in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, mighty King of Glory, by the reason of this, O oh Lord, this week, O oh Lord, will you come back to testify to your goodness in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by the reason of giving this, oh Lord, we will experience your goodness, your favor, your grace, abundant grace in our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you grace in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's give thanks to God. Hallelujah.
Sati, the Lord of Shiki, the Sati, one of him. He is the Lord of Lords, he is the King of Kings, he is the mighty God, the mighty man in battle. I want you to bless you for bringing you to the month of March 2019. Bless the Lord for keeping you alive, for keeping you healthy, for keeping you the faith to sing this month, the month of March 2019. Just lift up your voice and bless and bless and worship you. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. And every Sunday, you will open the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and preach on love. You did it the first Sunday, you did it the second Sunday, you did it for many Sundays in a row. And after some time, one of the elders in the church came and he said, Why is it that is that the only thing you know to preach? Why is it that every Sunday you are preaching on this? I said, I will continue to preach it until you get it. And before you get until you get it, I will not stop. And so we need to we need to still talk about the Holy Spirit. And I don't know whether we still talk about him next month, but at least for this month, we still talk about the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the Lord will help us. The book of Philippians, I think Philippians chapter 4, where he said that for me to say the same thing I gave to you is not to me, it is not grievous. But to you, it is safe. That is why I, Paul said, I still write and tell you, rejoice in the Lord always. And the Holy Spirit is the supreme authority in the church today. He's the supreme authority in the church. He's the one that calls men to walk and appoints them to office in the church. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Verse 2 to 4. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they have fasted and prayed, 
and laid their hands on them and sent them away. So Holy, the Holy Spirit was the one that called this, this brethren. He said, separate me Paul and Barnabas for the work that I have called them. He is the supreme authority, the one that appoints men into uh, to work in the church and to work for the Lord. Acts of Apostles chapter 20. Verse 28, Acts of Apostles chapter 20, verse 28. Say, Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. So the Holy Spirit. Is the one that made them overseers. Is the one that recruited them to serve in the church. So he is the representative of the Godhead in this dispensation on earth and in the church. And that is why we cannot do without him. And that's why we need to talk about him. And that's why we need to give him his rightful place in the church, in the body of Christ. Acts of Apostles, chapter 5. Verse 3 to 4. When Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back parts of the price of the land? Why is it the man? Was it not thy own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart that has not lied unto men but unto God? You know, when Ananias, other people were selling their properties and were bringing the, 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 the fruits into the church, and the church were sharing it for to all, the, all, the, all the members, Ananias tried to do the same thing, he and the wife. They sold their land, and then they kept part of the proceeds. They said, well, you know, the church will be known, the pastor will be known, the elders will be known. You know, let me just take part of the proceed and bring it to the church. And then, you know, I'll, the, the, the thing that that is all I saw. And they thought they were just deceiving the church. But the uh, Apostle Peter said, it was not to the church that you lied to. It was to the Holy Ghost that you lied to. The representative of the Godhead in this dispensation, in the church together. And so whatever we do to the church, we do it to the Holy Spirit. He is the one that is presiding over the church. And so, one is that he recruits people to work in the church. And the question you need to ask yourself is where has he, what has he, Ask you to do in the church. What does he ask you to do? Because if he's recruiting others, why hasn't he recruited you? Or is it that you are keeping, you are ignoring what he's telling you to do? If you're in the house of God, you must have something that you are doing. You must have an area that you are committed and say, God, I'm sorry, this is. It, it, not just something that comes to your head, but you know that the Lord has led it in your heart. The Lord over the church, the Holy Spirit, the administrator, that he has called and said, my son, my daughter, occupy for me in this city. I want to use you in this city, in the house of God. And I want to 
encourage you. If you are here and you, you, if there is no area that is you are committed to, then you we'll just come to church with worship God, we sing praises and share the dress and go home. And that's all. That is not all. Because the Holy Spirit does not, is not partial. He cannot ask some people to walk for him and leave him behind. I know many of us, if you go to a place, a place, maybe in, a, in, in, in an organization or in a place of work, and maybe the leader of that group is giving things to people. He gives this person one million, this person 10,000, this person 20,000, and nothing, didn't give you anything, you will complain. You go there and say, why? Why, why do you give what that is doing to you? But why is it in the house of God? No, the Holy Spirit has called some people. Serve me as an usher, serve me as a, a chorister, serve me as this way. And you didn't give anything to you, and you keep quiet, and you're happy. Why is it that in the secular world you will you will react and you find out why you are ignored? Why is it in the house of God? It doesn't bother you. And you feel so comfortable about it. And that's why I want to encourage you. There is something God has for you in his house. Because it's not a respect of persons. Is not passion. So find out what God has for you in the church and get about doing it. And when you are doing it, you know, just like Peter was telling Anna, Ananias, he did not, this thing he did, he did not do it to the church, he did not do it to men. But done it against the Holy Spirit. So see it. And that's thing we are doing. We are not doing it for anybody. We are doing it to the Holy Spirit. And as you do it to the Holy Spirit with all your heart, to the voice of your unity, with the grace and the grace of Christ, He will bless you and so do you. Because the Bible says, you know, Jesus Christ said that when the Holy Spirit comes, He will take of mine and show it to you. And he said, all that the Father has is man. I think, uh, uh, I think it's in John chapter 16, verse 14 and 15. He said that all that the Father has is man. That is why I say, you will take of mine and show it to you. And how is he going to show it to you if you are far from him? That's why we need to take this here. All the Father has. And if you say, you know that God is talking, God said that the silver is mine, the gold is mine, the cattle on a thousand hill are mine. You know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He said, it belongs to you. And Jesus said, the Holy Ghost will take of mine and show it to you. He will give you the news of the Lord that teaches, he said, and the God will teach you to profit. Profit maybe in business, investment, profit in your academy, profit in your career. All the teaching. How does it do? Through the Holy Spirit. And you need to get closer. You need to develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Because he is the representative of the Godhead now. Jesus came and he has learned. He did what? He, he did his assignment and he was going back to heaven. And then he said, the Holy Ghost is here. Get close to him. Get close to relationship with him. And as you do that, you will realize um, that the secrets of the kingdom, the hidden treasures of darkness, God, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you. And life will not be a struggle. It's only when we're doing it our own strength, our own mind, our own effort, our own wisdom that we struggle. And by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. 
reading in book of or the day I was praying. I was like, I don't know, I think it was here, somebody raised a prayer point. And we we're praying, oh God, for more grace, for more grace. And as I was not praying that, it just struck me. How does grace come? How does grace increase? And it took me to second Peter chapter one, I think verse two. He said, the grace and the peace of God be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. It doesn't come to prayer. There are levels of grace. I know you see some people, you see that, you see the things they are doing. And they are not sweating about it. I say, how, how are you doing all this? It's grace. But this grace doesn't come from prayer. At least, at least see a place in the Bible where it says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied to you through fasting and prayer. And I will say it in the Bible. The through the knowledge. Peace. Peace doesn't even come through prayer. It doesn't increase. I think that place said it multiplies. So it doesn't increase through prayer. It's true that you cast your cares upon him. And you can you not know how to cast your care upon him until you know him. Through the knowledge. So you get into intimacy. You get to know God. They develop a, an intimate personal relationship with this God. And as you get to know him more and more, more grace is being released upon your life. More peace is released into your life. And life will not be escaped. Come unto me, O ye that never and of heavy That's what Jesus Christ said. So, brethren, we still talk about the Holy Spirit this morning. And I pray that we will, go, we will be like the Indian Christians, that we will go home and search the scriptures and see that these things, they are true. You will find out whether they are true. And stop playing religion. Stop playing religion. Christianity is not a religion. It's a lifestyle. It's a relationship. We talked about some time about eternal life. Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ said that for, for deep for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 17, I think verse 1 and verse 4, Jesus Christ said, This is life eternal. And they might know you. Eternal life is not living forever. That's not what eternal life is. Everybody will live forever. In hell, people will still be, be in hell. They are in the world that the body will die in hell. But the living you is, is the spirit. The world that is the glory, intimacy with God, knowledge of God, relationship with God, that is the same. So you don't grow as a Christian by how long you are doing the great condition as, as a believer or by how how many times you come to church or by you know, how much of the of the doctrines and so on of the church that you know. You grow by the relationship with God. Growth, intimacy. And it's something you need to ask yourself. Since I got born again, how far? Am I at my God more? Today, than I need you a little bit. Than I need you a Have I made progress in my relationship with you? And I pray that God will stir up something in us that will make us to really seek the relationship. Praise the Lord. Let's pray.